Sunday School Short. Today we are in the book of 1 John. Walking through the New Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. Like, subscribe, and share. If this is a blessing to you, remember this is just a small synopsis of my daily Bible reading. It's not meant as a just a thorough Bible study here. We're just hitting the high points so that I'm encouraging you to be a daily Bible reader. Get into God's Word with me. We'll start out here reading the first four verses of first John we proclaim to you that the one who existed from the beginning whom we have heard and seen we saw him with our own eyes and touched him with our own hands he is the word of life this one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him and now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life he was with the father and then he was revealed to us we proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that you may fully share our joy. All right, cool. First John here is, John is likely one of the, the, the last of the 12 disciples still living. He lived in Ephesus at the time. This gives the basics of the faith so can, so that we can be confident in our faith. And uh, we just read the first four verses. Verse 5 says, uh, God is light. No darkness is in him at all. If we say we have fellowship with God, let, yet live in spirit, spiritual darkness, we are not practicing truth. Verse 8, if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves, not living in the truth. And it later goes on to say that we are calling God a liar. And um, Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So if, if we claim that we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves. And you've heard those people, hey, I, I, you know, I'm a good person. You know, I'm, I don't sin. Uh, that type of thing. No. Um, and I love this in verse 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive. Chapter 2. I'm writing this so that you won't sin. Now, there's a difference between living a sinless life and sinning less. We, can, we can't live sinless, but we can sin less, okay? But if anyone who does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. Verse 3. We can be sure we know him if we obey his commandments. And it goes on to talk about that the opposite is true, that that person is a liar, those who obey truly show that they are completely in love with him. Those who say they live in God, verse 6, uh, should live their lives as Jesus did. And that's what our walk as Christians should be. Lord, help me to be more like you. More like you. If anyone claims, verse 9, if anyone claims I am living in the light but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is still living in darkness. And it goes on to say, uh, he, who he's writing to, he's writing to uh, you who are God's children. You who are mature in the faith. You who are young in the faith. So he's writing to believers here. He's encouraging them and giving them assurance of their faith. Uh, verse 15, chapter 2 here. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not uh, love, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Verse 17 says a little something like this. The world is fading away and all that people crave, but anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. And it goes on to talk about the last hour and the Antichrist is coming. This is the time between Jesus' first and second coming here. Um, it's a, and it says, many Antichrists have already come. They're these false teachers that lure people away from the true faith in Jesus Christ uh, alone. And in chapter 3, we are God's children. And the last part of verse 1 says, But if the people, but the people of this world don't recognize we are God's children because they don't know him. So we don't know what we'll be like when Christ appears, but we know that we'll be like him. For we will see him as he really is. Chapter 3, verse 4. Anyone who sins is breaking God's law, for all sin is contrary to God's law. Uh, James tells us if we've kept the entire law except for one point, we've broken the whole law. Okay. 
Anyone who continues to live in him, this is a lifestyle of living in here. I'm going to want to live for Jesus. I'm living for you. It doesn't mean that you're perfect, okay? Uh, will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. See, again, going back to that, are you living for yourself, living for sin, or are you living for God? Romans 3.23, again, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we can't live sinless life. We're just forgiven, okay? As Christians, you're not sinless. You're not perfect. You're just forgiven. Um, but we do need to capture that in our thought life. 2 Corinthians 10 says, Take each thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So we must stop sin there, not linger on it, not excuse it away and live in it, all right? Uh, don't live a lifestyle of sin. If you're excusing away sin, if you're excusing away things that are contrary to the Bible, you're not immediately saying, God, I don't want to live that way anymore. I don't want to think that way anymore. I don't want to do those things. And you're going to mess up again and again and again, but continually going back to the cross. A walk of repentance is the walk of a true Christian believer. Verse 9. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. Verse 13. Don't be surprised that the world hates you. Uh, 14. If we love our Christian brothers and sisters, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Verse 18, let's not merely say that we have love that we love each other, but let's show uh, the truth by our actions. About, about your how about your money, your time, your talents? Are you a giver in these areas? Let's show it through our actions. James talks about that. Let our, you know, let your faith, let my actions show how true my faith is. That type of wording. Verse 23. And this is his commandment, and this is similar to the to the great commandment um, found in Leviticus and, and the Gospels. Uh, we must believe in the name of, of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. So it's talking about loving God and loving others. And we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us lives in us. Chapter 4, this is warning against false prophets. Do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the spirit. We must test them and see if the spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. And it goes on to say, a real prophet acknowledges Jesus Christ came in a real body, but if they don't acknowledge the truth about Jesus Christ, uh, they aren't from God and they have the spirit of the Antichrist. Verse 3. Verse 4 says, um, the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. And it goes on to say, people of the world have the world's point of view, essentially, but we belong to God. The last part of verse 6, if we do not belong to God, uh, if they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know if someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception. See here, be a daily Bible reader so that you will know what the truth is. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. In uh, chapter 4 here, verses 7 through 21, um, let us continue to love one another. Love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God. Anyone who doesn't love doesn't know God, for God is love. Verse 9 says a little something like this. God showed his love by sending his son so that we might have eternal life through him. He loved us and sent uh, his son as a sacrifice. Therefore, we ought to love one another. How many times have we heard this lately in Hebrews, in Peter, there's too much in here. Get in here. Don't neglect the reading. Okay. Uh, verse 13. God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Verse 15. All who confess that Jesus is the son of God have, have God living in them and they live in God. And it says again, God is love. And we, uh, and as we live in God, our love grows to be more perfect. How beautiful is that? See, if we're pursuing God, our love is going to be more perfect, more like Him. The last part of 17. So, we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face Him in confidence because we live like Jesus in this world. And I love this. Verse 19. Uh, we love each other because He first loved us. The last part of 20. But if we don't love people, we can see how can we love God who we can't see. Chapter 5. 
Starts out similar to four, love each other, etc. like that. It talks about faith, which is our cornerstone, uh, which we talked much about through Hebrews and, that, and other um, devotions lately. And God's proof by Jesus' baptism, his blood on the cross, and his Holy Spirit given to us are all witnesses that God test or, or what God testifies about his son. Verse 12. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. And here's the assurance verse here. Verse 13, chapter 5, verse 13. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. We can know. You can know. Verse 18. And we know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning. We've heard that many times throughout the book of 1 John. For God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. Get into God's Word with me. Like, subscribe, and share. God bless you.